I was in North Carolina um, and I was at a, at a studio. This is back when I was 19 or something, just first getting started with my first band, which was called Muscadine. And we were mixing at a place called Reflection Sound Studios. And the guy there, it was the first time that I, that I saw them and they were uh, 1030s. At the time, those were like those were like the hottest, you know. And so, like me, I was like, I have to get those. And so, my my first like real speakers that I bought were a set of uh, Genelec 1030s, and they ended up getting getting stolen. Down the road, I traded a Ampeg um, SVT for a set of 1031s. I kept those for a long time and I mixed, um, you know, lots of stuff, you know, on the 1031s. Number one thing is that they can translate that the work that you do on the speakers, particularly like the top end for me, I'm very particular about like the capsule choices and the microphones at the source and something about these that I think is cool it's kind of like a midfield thing. It's not, you know, it's, and it's uh, very exciting for tracking and stuff and, and, and for bass and synthesizers and drums and to, uh, like to be able to, you know, but to hear the kick drum and to be able to feel it and stuff. So one thing that seems super, super great about the GLM is, is um, like to be able to take the speakers um, into my next space and to be able to tailor them, you know, for that. And um, just like the fact that um, you can change the position, you know, from from the mix uh, like to this kind of thing, like a standing thing, like, I mean, that's amazing. Um, and then to uh, further that, you know, basically to have a preset for the couch or something like that is, you know, genius, yeah. Well, I started playing the guitar first and um, that came from my dad. I got my first uh, a Stratocaster, little Squire Strat when I was 13. Then I like started my first band and stuff there. Since since I was even seven or eight, you know, I was really really um, intrigued with the drums and stuff too. You know, so um, I got a drum kit, <clears throat> you know, like a kid's kit, and they fell apart, you know, from all the heads being smashed on. So I took cardboard boxes and and, and made a kit. Uh, what I always say is that that your time your time um, makes you money. You know, like. People will um, pay you to come back or to be or to, or to do a session or to play on their album because of your feel and your time and like where you put things. If it's a problem for them and you haven't spent enough time on your time um, and they and they're constantly trying to nudge everything you did around Pro <laughs> Tools and you're gone out of the room, then you're the person that they curse. You know, like that. Practicing and practicing and playing in time, in the studio, in headphones, whether it's a shaker track or something and just getting things to sit, you know, that's, uh, that's, been, that's been my goal. One of the things that I love about the production side is that um, I get to stay in the studio. So instead of, if it was my own project, maybe I go in once every nine months or once every 18 months or something into a studio for three weeks, <clears throat> which to me would not be, would, would not be um, enough, you know? So like the cool thing about it is, uh, about that side of it is to get to stay, you know, um, you know, like experimenting. And you also get to experiment on someone else's dime, which is great, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I'll file away certain things, you know, for like for my own stuff. Oh, like that was a great drum sound. That was a great chain. The production thing, as fun as it is, that's something that that you can do in the future on into the, you know, like in, in, into your 60s and 80s and stuff like that. But maybe flying around and, and, and being on stage might, you know, this is kind of the time, you know, for that. So yeah, but um, it's fantastic to me to be able to mix it all up and to shake it all up and nobody really knows what does that guy do? Like, who is that dude, you know, so.